Please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we worship you because of who you are. Lord, you've already blessed the service. You've already met us here. You've already had, hallelujah, worship. But teach us, Lord, to order our steps, order our days, order our ways. So we are, as dear children, sitting, waiting for the Father to speak. Speak, O Lord, for thy servants here. And Father, we'll be so mindful to give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' blessed name. Thank God. Amen. Just very quickly in Psalm 51, starting at verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Mm. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Just get myself together a little bit. The sermon renewed and restored. I really, if as I was developing and listening to the Lord, as the Lord was unpacking it for me, I really could have changed the name. I guess this happens to most preachers. And it instead of renewed and restored, it could have been just called changed. Changed. I mean, when we were in 2020, how many of us said, we're not coming out of this like we went in? Because we wanted things changed. And then we thought that 2021 was going to be a different year, and it just really kind of mirrored the same. But we said the same thing. How many of us said, when we come out of 2021, we'll be changed? But did we change? In small incremental ways, but I don't know whether people in general as a whole really change. Habits, whether good or bad, are hard to break. And so if we had a bad habit of not having devotion, then sure enough, we didn't have devotion. Even when we think of uh, New Year's resolutions or even the consecration. But there's something in the word of God. I'm going to pull out three words. And these three words are going to help us when we're talking about change. The first word is create. The next one is Restore. I'll give you the third one when we get there. But we are in that 51st chapter of the book of Psalms. And you all pray for me because my sermon was on my computer and electronics when it's working best or when it's working well it just is outstanding but when it's not working it's a problem but in the text that we read earlier David had just been confronted with Nathan or by Nathan Thou art the man. Art the man. What do you mean, Nathan? You took somebody else's wife. Got her pregnant. And when you tried to cover it up, your little scheme didn't work. 
and you decided to end this thing or straighten this thing out, you just go ahead and kill the husband. But never was there a desire to repent. And if you will, if we want to change things in our life, if we want to see change, permanent change, we've got to learn how to be repentant. To repent, the Bible doesn't talk about saying I'm sorry. I'm sorry is not in the Bible. <laughs> there might be individually those words, I'm and sorry, but together, what God is looking for is as we are going in one direction to do a 180 degree turn and go the different, the opposite way. And if we're prepared to repent, not, Lord, I feel sorry today and tomorrow I, I'll forget all about it, but repentant, God will give us the change. David wanted to change. The prophet confronted him. Thou art the man. You took a man who was serving the army and you loyally and you told your general when you approach the wall, tell everybody but Uriah to step back. Mm. David, not only were you brutal, you were terribly brutal. David, after getting the news, prays a prayer. If I started at the very beginning of the prayer and get me down to verse 10, he says, have mercy upon me, O God. We need God's kindness, his gentleness, his love, his mercy, his favor. According to your loving kindness, Lord, I know that you are kind and loving. You are everything lovely. There's everything lovely about you. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out, Lord, so that you're not looking at it and I'm not looking at it. Blot out my transgression. And Lord, there's some stuff that I need to have to happen to me. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. I'm guilty and cleanse me from my sin. I repent. For I, verse 3, acknowledge my transgression. I did it. I'm not pointing my finger at anybody else. I am the one that is guilty. Blot out my transgression. Uh, and then God, after you blot it out, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, I need a washing. I need you to forgive me, but I need you to blot it out and cleanse me. Get me clean like nobody can but you. For I acknowledge my transgressions not just transgression, but plural. I've been doing one thing after another, after another. And my sin is always before me, even though I was straightening things up on one side, but the guilt stayed with me. It, I carried it on my shoulders. And that's why my sin is always before me. And Lord, I know who I sinned against against you, you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I brought forth, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire the truth in the inward parts it's not what I do. I can bring a sacrifice. I can bring a burnt offering. I can bring a sin offering. I can bring a trespass offering. I can bring a grain offering. But that's what I do on the outward. But God, you are a discerner of the heart. And if my heart is wicked, if my heart is blackened, for me to have done one thing after another, 
and never say, God, I repent. You had to send a prophet to call me out. Verse 6, but you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me. You do it like nobody. Tide has nothing. All uh, Nobody can wash me like you can wash me. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Make me hear joy and gladness. What is he doing? He's telling you he's been going through. It didn't matter that he did all of the killing. And then the, the, the thing that he tried to do, which was to make it right, was to marry Bathsheba. Mm. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. And then this is what? I think the Lord has this thing about the re's for Christ community is in this relaunch, rebuild, refresh. Create in me a clean heart. Let me stop. I, I'm going to give you three points and then we're going to call it a night. The first is create. Create, and I, I, I almost can see, see David reflecting back on Genesis 1. And God was creating the heavens and the earth. And it was void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And God spoke and said, let there be light. I'm seeing David is saying, God, the same God that created the heavens and the earth out of a mess is the same God that can create in me a clean heart out of my mess, out of my darkness that I've provided. God, speak light into it. Create in me a clean heart. I did a little looking up the functions of a heart and the heart is uh, an interest, interesting piece of muscle. It's located just in the left of the middle of our chest. It's the size of your fist. And even though there's muscles all throughout your body, the heart is a muscle. But it has a special use. It pulls blood all over your system in about 60 or 70 seconds. It can feed every cell in your body. It's to give blood to the lungs, nutrients to the, to the cells. That's on the right side. The left side takes that blood and that waste and it dumps it out of the system. And in 60 to 70 seconds, God has this thing moving. Brings oxygen, carries away waste. It's amazing what it does. And we need a heart to stay alive. Everybody know that? And so let me just give you a little heart information. Take care of your heart. Um, my doctor told me that I should be active every day for about 20 minutes. This little research said about 20 to 30 minutes do jump roping, dancing. And we have sanctified dancing, don't we? Amen. We have all kinds of dancing. I had some music on yesterday, getting my dance on. I was dancing before the Lord. Amen. And I had those earplugs in. And while I was dancing, looking in the mirror, my wife was standing in the door. <laughs> I stopped immediately. But I, I enjoy dancing, playing a little basketball. You want to huff or puff just a little bit. You want to watch what you eat. Create in me a clean heart, oh God.
And so here David is asking that the Lord would create within him a clean heart, starting on the inside. I believe as we are asking God, God create in us as we're on this consecration to relaunch, rebuild, renew. Lord, I don't want to do anything else if I'm not doing that which pleases you. I don't want to be caught up in my own stuff. God created me a clean heart. You know, I really believe that the Lord is going to do something great after our consecration. But, but this is what, and this is where the Lord has me. But he wants people with clean hands and a clean heart. And so I sense that the Lord is calling us as we are in this time of fasting and praying and denying self-denial is to go through in the practice of asking God for forgiveness. Looking at behavior, attitudes, thoughts that don't bring him glory, and repenting. Remember I said that what I believe is going to be a part of change that we need to see, spiritual change, is repentance. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my tone that I took when I was talking to my spouse. Forgive me for the temper that I displayed before my children, or maybe I was out at, and about at the store, and I, I, here I had to repent uh, just picking up a pizza, and the guy just couldn't get my name right, and I'm thinking, King. <laughs> and he kept pulling out other names. And I said, listen, like Dr. Martin Luther King. Do you know that should have been his clue? He still got it wrong. Uh, but, but my attitude wasn't right either. And I was a little heavier on my voice than I really needed to be. My name, I didn't have to do it like that. Say he didn't have to do it like that. And I, I thought, I said, listen, maybe this is his first day on the job. Maybe uh, other people are watching, and maybe he's nervous. And so I said, it's King. I said, let me give you the phone number. He finally got it, told me that the order wasn't ready, but it had actually been ready for 10 minutes. But people will try us. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. O oh God, create in me. I believe it starts with asking God for cleansing. And then the next is renew a steadfast spirit. Renew. It means that it gives the picture that at one time, David had the new spirit, the steadfast spirit, but something happened along the way. And for some of us, something happens along the way. We didn't even realize it. We got colder. They had to keep pumping you up in praise and worship. They had to keep exhorting you to put your hand together. They had to uh, exhort you. Can you say hallelujah? Can you say praise the Lord? Something happened along the way where things got cold. You got cold. You took things for granted. There might have been a time earlier where uh, you had this steadfast, loyal spirit that was within you. And so you woke up in the morning thanking God. God, I'm here by your grace. God, it's by your grace and your mercy that I'm enjoying the things that I'm enjoying. Maybe you had conversations with the Lord early in the morning. Maybe he woke you up in the midnight. Now he nudges you and you say, Lord, in the morning, give me. Hmm. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast or loyal or constant or firm spirit. And do not take your Holy Spirit 
He says, do not cast me away from your presence. Lord, let me ever be in your presence, for in your presence there's light, there's love, there's grace, there's mercy. In your presence there's joy, joy unspeakable. And that's why I will in your presence be in your presence for an eternity and will enjoy being in your presence. Don't cast me away from your presence. Some kind of way I got cold along the way. Don't take your Holy Spirit, that who keeps me and guides me and gives me information and teaches me and protects me and intercedes for me. Don't take your Holy Spirit away. Don't take it away. And then the third R is to restore to me the joy of your salvation. I once had joy, but all of a sudden, my joy kind of is limping along. You know how years ago, you sing a song, joy when I think about what he's done for me. And you know what? It didn't take but one person, somebody might have just sang it, but then the, the old church, you'd meet on a Friday or a Wednesday, somebody else would pick it up. I get joy when I think about what he's, and then you just sang it five minutes, but it start up again. You don't sing the song anymore. Matter of fact, uh, you don't have the glad glads like you used to have the glad glads. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. He says, and we're just about finished, then I will teach the transgressors your ways, hmm. and sinners shall be converted to you. So there's something that happens when God restores, when he renews, when he creates. There's something that happens when I repent and I allow, we say it, but for us to allow God to let it happen, we say, Lord, have your way. Well, what the Lord wants is for us to have a clean heart. He gave David what to say so that we could read it and have it for eternity. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. God, as you finish working on me and and creating a clean heart and restoring and renewing. As you have your way on me, then God, I'll have something to say. I'll tell people that God is still renewing because he renewed me. See, I'll be able to teach the transgressors your way. I'll say that God is still restoring because he restored me. I'll say that God is still refreshing because he refreshed me. I'll say that God is still rebuilding because he rebuilt me. He's still revitalizing because I've been revitalized. He's still reactivating. He plugs me in. He doesn't let me sit on the bench. I wanted to pull myself back, but he said no. And then he reinvigorates. Hallelujah. Gets me excited again. He repairs. He repurposes. We'll, over a period of time, start out with one set of purposing, but then God will repurpose us. He'll restructure, reconstruct. Ah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Then I'll teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Create in me. And so this is what, as I was going through this sermon, and it started with me, and then I began to think about the congregation. I believe that God is preparing us. He's really set us up for some great things. Can you imagine those of us as we're in the presence of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit is operating and moving, and we are demonstrating, we're demonstrative about our joy of our salvation, 
and we sense that God is upholding us so it doesn't matter how bad 2022 is or in the future. It doesn't matter what is going on in the world. God has given us an assignment and God is going to come back and check and see, did you follow through with the assignment that I've given? Yes, there was stuff that was going on. I told you in the last days that it was going to be terrible times. It was going to be dangerous times. I told you what to expect. And so you should not have been confused. You should not have been fearful. You could have walked by faith because I've already revealed. And you could have been one with a prophetic voice that says, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. But you hid in your house. You start being overcome by other spirits. The joy wasn't there anymore. Sinners weren't converted. I believe it starts with us as we begin in repentance. I'm going to ask everyone to stand for a moment. Some of us, and if you could just close your eyes and bow your head, some of us know specifically what we need to ask God for forgiveness or repent about. Maybe you were fussing on your way here to church. Maybe you got an argument all set up well for when you leave. Maybe all through the week you've just been a, a mean spirited. There's been no peace, no joy in your home. God forbid God assignments. God forbid people who are needing needing to hear a word from the Lord. You weren't prepared. You couldn't do it because you had to get over your own feelings of anger and distress and fear. But I sense the Lord is saying, come unto me and ask God for forgiveness. David had to ask God for forgiveness. David had to repent. And as he repented, God blessed him. That first child died, but the second child was Solomon, who built one of the most beautiful temples who was one of the wisest men in the Bible. God blessed David. David had to go through some things, but when David repented, God was able to use him in a miraculous way. I sense that God wants to use us in a miraculous way. But there's some things that we've got to repent for. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, as they pray with me, Lord, we not coming with form or fashion. We're just here, your children. We're not going to try to make sense out of all the stuff that's going on in the world because it's nonsensical. But we are going to ask you to give us wisdom how we as your children ought to align ourselves, how we ought to live, how we ought to glorify you, how we ought to be a part of extending the kingdom of God, how we ought to be on our assignment because we all want to hear the words from our Savior, thy good and faithful servant. You told us to occupy until you come. Occupying means two things, to protect and to invest. You want us to protect, hallelujah, glory to God, righteousness and the word. Protect the little innocent children. Protect communities. Protect against the darkness that seeks to come in. Protect against injustice. Protect. And then, God, not only do you want us to protect, you want us to invest. That's what occupy until you return. Invest our time. Invest our talents. Invest our resources to invest. Occupy until you come. But it begins with repenting. 
that we might be changed. We didn't lose our salvation, but we lost keeping up with the Lord. We got cold along the way, lax along the way, withdrawn. But Lord, we're here at the altar now. We're, every pew is our altar. That's our altar. And we're asking God for forgiveness. Just a simple sermon on forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wash, Father. Cleanse. We're on the altar, Lord. We're on the altar. Father, we'll be so mindful to give you the praise. Because you could have come back. And we had yet work to do. But you've delayed your coming. You could have taken us from here. But you've delayed it. And so, Father, we thank you. I thank you for forgiveness. We believe that we've been forgiven. We thank you for the grace, God, that you've extended to us, the undeserved, unmerited favor. And Lord, we thank you. When we didn't have enough sense to appreciate your grace, that's when mercy kicked in. Thank you for your kindness, Lord. Thank you. And Lord, use us for your glory. Use us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Father, in the name of Jesus. Our spirit says, yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Have your way, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll be so mindful to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' blessed name. Now, put your hands together if you believe the Lord has washed you, cleansed you, renewed you. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You know, I think it's time to rejoice. After the Lord is blessed, and I believe that some people, whether virtual or whether here in the sanctuary, God has lifted the load. Thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website, our Facebook page, or Twitter.